Hi, it's Tim again. I was taking a quick look at a Ranger RCI 2950, the old model, and uh, just wanted to pass something on. Here's what it, here's what it looks like. Had uh, okay power output, and on AM FM the modulation sounded okay. A little bit questionable, but not too bad. On sideband, the uh, modulation was terrible. If it was super low, it wasn't so bad, but it had a uh, very warbled sound to it, and uh, almost an electronic sound to it. Uh, one of the giveaways was when I was trying to align it, and I had the radio up on the side like this, whenever I would lean it back to uh, take a look at where I needed to put my toll, the uh, the frequency would change, and then when I after I do the alignment, all the frequency would go crazy again and start moving around. But what I found, uh, and it actually uh, took care of the warble sound too. But I'll pass this on to you. Is a bad solder joint on? I believe it's the regulator right here. I'm going to zoom in to show you exactly where it is. So in case you're working on one of these, or if you just have one and people tell your audio sounds atrocious when you're on sideband, let me adjust that. Something to take a look at. I don't know how much I'll be able to actually zoom in. There, it seems like it's kind of wanting to focus. Let me go back out a little bit. Okay. But, let me get, see if I can find a pointer here. Right here. You can kind of see, if I can zoom in, or even pull it closer. Alright, I think that's kind of focused pretty good, but uh, this had broken loose at these three joints right here, or three three connections right here, and uh, even if you were to solder it back on, it would look okay, but I can't try to get it, it's hard working inverted and backwards. Anyhow, it actually broke free from the pad. So the pad, a little bit of the pad was ripped off. So the solution was, sorry, got the wrong one. <laughs> the solution was to uh, just rough it up a little bit and extend the uh, the pad over with a piece of copper and solder it. But anyhow, check all of these, these solder joints because they're the, uh, were all the transistors, I'm gonna put it back so we can see more or just my fine video skills. Anyhow, check all these because it's where the transistor is mounted to the body uh, for the heat sinking purpose and then the legs can generally wrap around through the board which this is a pretty old radio so at least probably. Okay there was actually more that went with that last part but I lost some footage in the editing process. But um, real quick, I wanted to show you what I came up with, with for this. Uh, stuck it in this little box here. And that was so I could move it in on my truck. And I actually used to have a, a CB in there along with it. it. Believe it or not, there's not a lot of room. Even with a uh, Super Duty, there wasn't a lot of room for everything. So I found it easier to just build this box. It's heavy enough. It sat on the floor. Uh, but I decided that I wanted to put this elsewhere. So what I did was... Uh, I got a computer power supply, and I'll see if I can loosen this up enough that I can show you to the top, and I can even show you later what I did with that. Try and zoom in a little bit and show you. I have different taps on the top of the power supply for, what do I have, 
12 volts, 5 volts, 3 volts, and then not minus 12 volts back here. But uh, I just mounted it to the top of this, and as you can see, it's powering the radio. And I'll drop it back down so you can see. And while it's not a full 13.8 volts, uh, let's see if I can swing it around, I'll show you the voltmeter. Do, do, do. A little bit further here, a little bit further. So it's showing 1178 volts, which is definitely a little bit low, but I'm going to grab the mic and I'm going to put my big face in the way here. Uh, and I'll show you the, the power, but uh, on AM, it keeps it, get 10 watts output, it still regulates it pretty well, 1172. But I'll show you the, uh, the output power real quick. And it works. I would recommend <coughs> whenever you do uh, an alignment or anything on it, definitely use a rate or a power supply that's capable of handling 13.7, uh, 13.8, whatever the, uh, the manual tells you to. But once you get that all done, you can stick it in here and have something that's ready to go. It's a nice cheap power supply. I don't know what the, uh, what the actual amperage output on this is or the wattage output. Probably about 300 watts on these. But, uh, no, that's just a guess. I didn't look it up or anything. But, um, so there's the, uh, the watt meter, and I'll zoom into it a little bit. And there you go. So with the radio and AM, and do a dummy load, I have it set to just right about 10 watts. And uh, I'll throw it on upper sideband. And I have the uh, <coughs> the birds in peak function right now, so we'll see what we get out of that. Turn that up a little bit. Right about 25 watts, right about what it's supposed to get. This is that RC2950. So uh, everything seems to be pretty good. And even with this, I'll turn this back to the radio so you can hear just uh, real quick. Zoom it out. Wrong way. I, you should probably be able to hear that. It's pretty quiet. There's you go up and down the band. There's not really any noise that the power supply is picking up. Now I did hear this on AM. Let me turn the. Uh, you can definitely hear a noise on AM. Goes away on FM, on AM. It's not real bad. It comes and goes depending on here you can hear it pretty good there. But what I find with that, I have these LED fluorescents here, and turn the light off, and always goes away. So again, it's not even the power supply. That was it, and I'll try and get this video together with uh, the first half. This was the, the radio that I found the, uh, uh, I believe it was a regulator I said that was, uh, the, the leads had broken loose on it. But works now, does a good job, and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful for you. See ya.